The effects of the coronavirus pandemic on the environment were first seen from space. This is China. You can see how the levels of nitrogen dioxide pollution from cars, power plants and factories plummeted over some cities by 40% after restrictions were set to contain the outbreak. On top of that, China's climate change and carbon dioxide emissions fell by about a quarter over four weeks as coal and oil-fired industrial activities stopped. We're seeing a similar thing happen in other parts of the world too, like Italy, the UK and New York City, as industries are being temporarily shut down to help fight the spread of the virus, which has killed more than a quarter of a million people. Lockdowns have also led to a 70% drop in demand for air travel compared to last year, another change that's caused the level of air pollutants in some places to fall. And while it's not an effect of climate change, animals have been spotted roaming freely around cities, now completely empty of cars and crowds. While these seem like short-term wins for climate and nature, will the coronavirus outbreak have long-term effects in the fight against climate change? To answer this, we need to look at three things. Private investment into green projects, government's green policy, and behavioural shifts in communities. Throughout 2019, we saw the effects of global warming unfold on an unprecedented scale. But thanks to climate change protesters change is coming. and science, it was the year that people got talking not about climate change, but the climate crisis that urgently needs addressing. Everyone has to stand up to combat the climate crisis. So 2020 was lined up to be a key time for building ambition to cut climate heating emissions through the formal UN negotiating process. But with important in-person meetings postponed around the world, this could hold back collective efforts to tackle global warming. So how will this affect the flow of investment that's geared to fight the climate crisis? Let's talk about spending on renewable energy. It's thought global demand for energy in 2020 could slump by 6% because of the restrictions placed on homes and industry during the outbreak. And it's hit energy markets across the board, including renewables and fossil fuels, in particular oil. Things got heated between the world's two biggest suppliers, Russia and Saudi Arabia. And in early March, their spat led to the price of oil to fall more than 30%. On top of that, coronavirus has led to a drop in demand for oil, with fewer planes flying and industry shutting down. So what's this got to do with climate change? On the one hand, that can create an incentive for some people, for example, households to go out and buy gas-guzzling vehicles because the prices are low and now. At the same time, what it's actually doing is creating a great uncertainty for oil and gas companies and the investors in those companies, and of course, for any country that is heavily dependent on oil and gas development for its economic, um, economic growth path. And while OPEC+, Plus, which includes Russia and other oil producers, said they would cut output by 10 million barrels per day from May, governments could still face growing demand to help bail out struggling oil companies. And this would go against the long-term global aim of eliminating fossil fuel use. But what we don't want to do is have our government spend huge amounts of money to actually support and prop up fossil fuel industries when we know there's an inevitable shift now happening to a low carbon society. So artificially propping them up for longer is only going to slow um, that transition and actually make it more expensive. Some experts think the crisis has highlighted the need to shift to a more resilient energy infrastructure based on renewables. We need to be able to craft an economic future where we take care of everybody, where we leave no one behind and which is green. And they are not in opposition now with, uh, with the price of renewable energy falling and with the um, uh, total cost of coal, including healthcare costs, etc., better understood. So now this is really the time where we have to bring these two, uh, these two stories together. And while the wider economy takes a hit, investment into eco-friendly business could suffer too. Green bonds used to fund projects addressing climate issues have become increasingly popular with investors, but governments have been slow to climb on board. Now, as countries brace their economies hit by the virus, some argue putting money into green projects could help tackle two huge problems at the same time. 
Green bonds are absolutely essential in terms of trying to build back better coming out of uh, the COVID-19 shock um, and to do so in a way which we're more resilient against future shocks as well. Clean energy investments can actually yield three to eight times the economic return of fossil fuel investments um, and uh, a global uh, ambitious investment in renewable energy could lead to 42 million new jobs by 2050. Next up, policy. For governments at the moment and for companies, the question is, how do we open our doors again? How do we get people back to work? How do we keep uh, our businesses running? But in those short term uh, problem solving, there is a possibility to have a long term goal achievement as well. Countries are digging deep to support families, workers and businesses hit by the outbreak. Germany plans to spend around 750 billion euros to fight the crisis and aims to cut greenhouse gas emissions to 55% of 1990 levels by 2030. Then there's the UK, which has promised around £350 billion to help the country cope and has pledged to bring carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. So will coronavirus bailout funds be used to push ahead climate action as well? The US Senate recently voted on a $2 trillion stimulus package the bill is passed. to help households and businesses during the outbreak. But it cut support for the wind and solar industry. The EU's recovery, on the other hand, looks greener, with leaders agreeing the bloc's plan should take into account their long-term goals of fighting climate change. But analysts say it shouldn't be a case of choosing one or the other. It's estimated that uh, governments might invest something like uh, $10 trillion or more in coronavirus response and recovery. So using that money to help shift towards a much more low carbon, much more resilient economy going forward, and one which is much more equal uh, for people around the world and in society is something that they can do. Um, and this is the opportunity to, to seize that. While we've seen dramatic declines in greenhouse gas emissions in some places during the pandemic, it's unlikely to be sustainable. As China eases out of lockdown, the car industry there is already rebounding, with some reports suggesting the outbreak has put people off using public transport. And as industries rev up, pollution levels have started to rise again, something likely to happen elsewhere in the world too. But the new greener routine forced on many people during the pandemic of traveling and buying less has been a chance to see what a more climate-friendly lifestyle could look like. In fact, in a recent survey, only 9% of Britons said they wanted life to return to normal once the outbreak was over. And what about the climate activists? In September 2019, around 6 million students from more than 100 countries marched in the streets demanding political action. Now facing a world on lockdown, groups like Fridays for Future have taken their weekly demonstrations online. It doesn't mean we have to let go completely of activism. We can, we can find other methods. We can do it online. We can do it from home. And you just have to be creative and find new ways of doing it. The coronavirus outbreak has proven how quickly action can be taken to confront a global crisis, including changing the way we live our lives. And it's an experience that could offer major insights into how we collectively deal with climate change going forward.